Hi, I wanted to share with you a handout that will help you with reply posts in the discussion. So as you begin to look at the discussion of your classmates, I want you to think about how you're going to reply to them. And I want you to remember that there are some rules of etiquette and some ways that you can uh, increase your quality of posting, as well as be more interactive and helpful with your classmates. So let me go through this. What is a reply post? Well, a reply post is a um, conversation piece. Uh, it's basically one part of a conversation. Imagine that you're in the classroom and you're talking with your classmates in a discussion. Your reply would be that part of the conversation. So it's the same kind of thing, but in written text in a discussion post on Canvas. So it's it's really a way to show your respect for the other student to demonstrate that we're listening and provide strong feedback. So how do you do this? Well, I've jotted down five ways that you can think about as you approach this. These are strategies that you can take or steps you can take. Uh, first off, you have um, one, it's most important that you've read the post entirely so it shows you've listened to your classmate in their discussion and make sure you understand them uh, completely. Two, uh, that when you write the reply that you thank your classmate for their contributions. This is really important to be positive and thankful and make sure you name number three, what that contribution is. What is it that you saw in their post? some piece of evidence, something they said that really uh, you thought was very valuable. Four, find a link between their contribution to some resource in the module we just were studying in. So it might be something from a video, from an article, from a website, from a lecture, uh, and you're going to make a connection there. You can even name what it is, what resource it is. And five, make sure you identify a concept that we're discussing in this module. Name some concept that's significant in that contribution that the classmate made and talk about it and even provide your own uh, example of contribution. Now, what happens if you want to provide um, uh, constructive feedback? That is, you want to help the student see something. Well, the key to being constructive is to make sure that you're respectful, professional, and helpful. There is a method for being constructive in your feedback so that you help the student see something they may not have seen. Uh, some people call this criticism. I like to call it uh, just sharing your thoughts on how to improve something or how to look at something a different way. And we call this the sandwich approach. In the sandwich approach, what you want to do is structure your comments in such a way that, like a sandwich, you have two pieces of bread. Uh, the top and the bottom, the first and the last thing you say, are positive. And the middle part is in a positive tone, but it's going to offer some criticism constructively, or it's going to offer some uh, ideas that may not have been included in the contribution of your classmate, something that they may think about. The key here is staying professional, but making sure you open very strongly with positive feedback and close very strongly with positive feedback. That's the sandwich approach. Now, something that we all have to remember, even myself, always have to stop and think about this, is have I done a um, punctuation spelling check? Have I done a grammar check? And all your posts, including those that are the initial post and then the reply post, all need to be checked for grammar. Make sure you look at those. This is a good habit to get into for college writing. It's a good habit to get into for any profession you're going to go into where writing is a part of it. Uh, but make sure you do that in this course. One way to do that is to put it into a Word document or some other website where you're making a document and use that Word, dot, Word um, engine to check your grammar. Or you can put it in Grammarly or some other website that will let you check their grammar. If you're not sure about the grammar, do that. If you're sure, you don't even have to go there. You can read it back to yourself. But definitely do the proofreading before uh, going and posting it. Also, you might want to use that other document as a way to compose your entire post so that you can play with it at that point until you re really have it where you want it before you put it in the discussion. Okay, I hope this has been helpful. The idea here is that I want you to be able 
to do really high quality reply posts. I'd like to see everybody succeed, get the top grades in class. Make sure you follow this and uh, look forward to seeing your post and your reply post this week.